mit äh, Bogdan Brzovski. Man verzeiht mir eventuelle falsche Aussprachen. <lacht> ja, genau. Die, diese, diese polnischen Namen sind nicht so einfach zu versprechen. Wie, wie, richtig? Oder Brzozowski? Oder wie wär's Brzo ja. Man ja, kann ja. sagen Brzozowski Bogdan. Ja. So, ich <lacht> würde sogar meine Präsentation auf Englisch durchführen. Yes, ich hoffe, dass das ist. Okay, yeah, so I will now switch to English. We'll start my video and now we'll share my screen. So please let me know if this is visible. Uh, for the moment, it's a green, some kind of green okay, screen. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's, that's green. That, that's, that's according to, to what, uh, what we agreed. Yeah, the green is, is good Yeah, for the presentation purposes, but now I hope that there is something more yeah, visible. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay, so shall I start already? Yes. Perfect, yeah, then welcome everyone. During today's short half an hour session, I would like to share with you one small but nice and useful feature uh, that uh, uh, can be used uh, uh, along with, uh, uh, with uh, class, uh, class-based exceptions in, in any ABAP program, uh, meaning uh, how can we propagate uh, class-based exception in any ABAP program? Additionally, <clears throat> adding information that is stored behind the long text that is linked uh, to the message uh, that is thrown through the class-based uh, exception. So first of all, I want to introduce shortly myself. I know that uh, maybe this is not so important for the topic of my presentation, but I, I thought that during uh, current uh, hard coronavirus times, it is also good to share some human aspect with, with, with all of you. That's, that's why I, apart only from uh, my, uh, my professional career, I also want to show you some photos what do I like to do during my, uh, during my free time? Okay, but now let's jump to the most important part of this presentation. Yeah, so as I already said yeah, today, I would like to uh, show you how can we propagate uh, a class-based exception in, in any, uh, any ABAP uh, application, uh, how we can propagate it through the call stock which is the most recommended way by SAP of handling any error nose situations. And additionally, how could we uh, also link the long text, which is sometimes more self-explanatory and more meaningful for the end user yeah, who will eventually receive this, this information. Uh, what are the advantages of uh, such solution? Yeah, so, uh, this, this could be a kind of quick win for any of you who would decide to use this type of uh, solution, yeah? because it does not require a big uh, implementation effort. It is quite easy for daily use. Uh, we can also easily lock those uh, messages that are stored as the attributes of our exception class, uh, so they can be easily locked inside the application lock. Uh, we are also following here another good practice, meaning that whenever we are issuing the message, yeah, we should uh, do it statically, meaning that uh, we should then use uh, explicitly, explicitly name of the uh, message class and its number for uh, the possibility of using where used uh, functionality. Uh, in order to identify those places of the code which are issuing our message that is then linked to the, the class exception. And uh, at the end, yeah, this uh, solution could be used for uh, both scenarios, yeah, like if we are implementing something totally from scratch, or if we want maybe to improve uh, error handling in the already existing uh, applications. Now we will go to the most 
I hope the most interesting part of this presentation. Yeah, so I want to to show you live demo on our demo system. Sorry, not this icon that should be here. So uh, in our company for which I'm working in, in, in Capgemini, we have uh, implemented so-called ABAP development framework, which uh, consists of uh, some very useful uh, classes uh, that uh, are supposed for the general use in any uh, ABAP project. And amongst those uh, classes within this, this uh, as we called ABAP development framework, we also have our example uh, exception class, which allows us throwing exceptions along with the uh, along with the long text. Yeah. So uh, we also wanted to avoid writing <clears throat> additional documentation to all of, all of those classes that we use uh, within ABAP development framework. That's why we decided uh, instead of writing such uh, huge documentation, just implement uh, examples yeah, in this package named ZCAP examples that are self-explanatory and that are showing us how you can use in practice given class being part of this uh, development framework. Yeah, so now we will focus on this, uh, uh, on this uh, uh, class exception example together with the long text, I will execute this program using the bugger. So uh, I hope that will be easy for all of us to understand better what is the idea behind this solution. So we will try to execute it using the bugger and also throwing the message that later on will be presented uh, along with its uh, with its uh, long text. All right, we are now inside the bug area. Then uh, I also want to show you that the exception will be propagated through the call stack. Yeah, that's why first we will call the method named uh, first first call. We also want to, as it was decided on the selection screen here, we want to use the long text feature. So uh, after first call, we are making the second one. <clears throat> and this is the place in which you can start handling your exception yeah? in, in your business case in the real life. Yeah? So whenever you see some error, no situation, uh, you will probably uh, create appropriate message for that situation. Yeah. And then you will issue this message using standard uh, message command. As I already said, yeah, we are issuing it statically in order for easier uh, identification of those places later on when this message is being in use. Yeah. So we can see now that uh, we have thrown here is this uh, message telling us that uh, that exception with this message number from this message class has been thrown from the second call? Yeah. So in our case, this value, this value, and this one, they are handled over to the message as the parameters or as the playholders like ampersand one ampersand two and ampersand three i will show later on to all of you how this message is defined in the message class but uh, additionally uh, we have defined uh, long text for this message which which i also will present to you in a moment yeah so uh, we can also while throwing this exception instead of for available standard placeholder placeholders from ampersand one to ampersand four, we can also put additional values that later on will be uh, handled over to the 
long text part of the message yeah with additional information like in this occasion the uh, username system that date and system time uh, then we decide yeah because because of the fact that we we have decided yet yeah, to use uh, our solution with the long text you you see that the racing command is slightly more complex otherwise in case you don't need to use long text the, the racing uh, command is is very easy and and very uh, straightforward yeah so now we will be debugging how this uh, exception object is being instantiated <clears throat> So first of all, yeah, we are just calling super constructor. Uh, additionally, this part of the exception constructor is standard. We have no influence on its implementation yet yeah, because all of the attributes of uh, uh, our exception class must be initialized inside constructor. But you can see that here, what we did is uh, additional uh, implicit enhancement at the end of the constructor method yes yeah? so now when we will jump to this uh, enhancement you will see that whenever we are handling over the default value of our text id and uh, if uh, system variables uh, relevant for the system message are not empty, then we will issue this message once more again, but only in order to store its full text in another attribute of our of, of our uh, uh, exception class. Yeah, this, still this part does not yet contain the long text, and. Uh, then we can again assign all of the elements of the standard system variables to the appropriate attributes. We have also another alternative. Yeah, if uh, we do not have any particular message class and message number for our exception, but only just the string with the error message, then we can go this, this way. Yeah, but at this moment, I will not be explaining this part here yeah, because we want to focus on the on the long text feature that requires a specific message uh, id and message number to be uh, determined so that's that's all of uh, that's uh, all uh, from the constructing of this uh, exception class here yeah? now when we will continue yeah we will throw this exception we can capture it and in case yeah if we if we want to uh, uh, present this uh, long text uh, that is linked with our message yeah we need to then to uh, to use also a standard uh, get long text uh, method yeah that uh, is inherited after uh, interface if message that must be linked to any uh, exception class and how this long text is being retrieved that's that's also quite interesting okay? so we will jump in a moment to this part so you can see that here uh, i have redefined get long text uh, message for our uh, class in that way that First of all, yeah, uh, the, the, the first part is just standard text uh, that uh, is available without long text part. Then if uh, the attribute that this particular uh, exception does not has uh, long text, then we will leave this uh, uh, method. But if not, we can use this BAPI in order to retrieve in the form of the internal table the, the the contents of the long text so in our case you can see we have this this additional information that can be 
connected to the standard message, yeah, informing by whom, when, at, uh, at which time this exception has been thrown. Yeah, so this, this part is defined as the long text of, of our message. Still, we are using placeholders, but this time without, uh, th these are only ampersands without uh, numbers. Yeah, so we need to remember that we can start with the attribute MSG V5, 6, 7. In that case, yeah, in, in our class, we offer maximum number of those uh, attributes up to nine. And uh, later on, we will need inside to, to take care of looping over those all lines and also to replace those places where the ampersand appears with appropriate attribute of our of our message class like MV MSG V5, 6, 7, up to 9. Yeah, so uh, we can see maybe I will not be now uh, keeping you for too long, <clears throat> but the final result would be like here. Yeah, so this, what will be returned, uh, maybe we'll try to show you full uh, string, yeah, that will be returned by this get long text implementation yeah so here you can see that now our message can be more meaningful can be longer yeah so what we will see eventually okay maybe it's not so uh, nicely presented here yeah, because i have uh, enlarged the screen for uh, better readability for all of you but you can see that apart from the very ah okay we can see everything even here yeah? so we have everything what we what we had here yeah uh, now uh, i think it will be time to stop this live demo and focus on the most interesting parts of the implementation itself but maybe before jumping back to the uh, presentation I will also show you how the message uh, itself is being defined here. Yeah? So you, you, here you can see the standard message as we always do. But uh, here we have this, this additional long text defined. Okay, let's press it once more. Okay, I don't know why it does not want, ah, okay, maybe. Mm does not want me to show. I guess that this is maybe due to the fact that I am presenting uh, now, uh, because one moment ago I was able to see it, but let's do one more try. Let's try to, if we can see it in the change mode. <clears throat> yeah, I think now we will see. Exactly. Yeah. So you can see yeah, that here, this is what we have already seen uh, while debugging, that uh, we can additionally enhance our message with the long text uh, with those additional, in that case, three ampersands, but uh, there are, uh, uh, there are uh, uh, five more available yeah, in, in our solution. If you, of course, needed more more of them, you can always uh, uh, do uh, uh, implement additional attributes and uh, make sure that there will be even more of them available. Okay, so this is all what I wanted to show you as a live demo on the system. I will leave the system and we will get back again to the presentation. Uh, in order to show you the most essential parts of this uh, of this uh, implementation, yeah. So, uh, what is uh, interesting here, yeah, is that uh, it's good to follow some some practices, yeah. Whenever we are uh, handling with uh, class-based exceptions, so I think one of important practices is always to derive our 
uh, application specific uh, exceptions uh, from CX static check. Yeah, not do not derive it from CX root. Yeah, which is at the at the very top of the inheritance tree. Uh, why? Because uh, sometimes uh, uh, it is uh, recommended that the dynamic check exception, uh, which also uh, is inheriting directly after CX root, when this dynamic check exception leads to the short dump. Yeah, there are some, some situations in, in standard SAP solutions that this dynamic check exception is supposed to cause the short dump. Uh, and uh, if we will capture this the exception, we'll try to handle it in that way that it will not end up with the short dump. It could uh, lead to, to, to the problems yeah, with, with inconsistent data, for example. And yeah, that's why uh, it is always safer to uh, uh, derive our, uh, our solution specific exception from SAIX static check, not from the SAIX root. Yeah? We also have this SAIX no check but this one is always occurring implicitly. Uh, of course, you cannot see it in the, in the uh, interface of, of the method or function model or whatever uh, that uses uh, exception. But uh, uh, you can uh, assume that this exception uh, uh, is, is always defined uh, implicitly. Yeah? So the, the, the next, uh, sorry, the next uh, important uh, thing is that we do not need to define any additional interfaces, but we will always inherit those two ones that uh, are already defined within SAIX root, yeah, within, within the parent of all exception class. Uh, another interesting topic is that uh, the, the attributes uh, which you can see here, they should contain those all uh, uh, attributes that, uh, like, that their values uh, will replace uh, later on the placeholders that are defined within the message yeah, from MSG V1 to V4 and later on from V5 to V9 in case of the long text. Yeah, we have also the, uh, oh, sorry, we have also the uh, flag whether uh, we want to use the long text or not. <clears throat> what we additionally see here that we are also using this uh, type named TS MSG one to four in order to uh, to translate the string into the uh, message uh, con that contains nothing but only those four placeholders. But that's this uh, second uh, case in our constructor, which I was not presenting and which is a kind of uh, off topic of this session. Uh, additional interesting uh, part is the <clears throat> uh, constructor implementation in the form of the enhancement. Yeah, so this is something which we have already seen uh, in uh, in uh, debugger. Yeah, so here uh, also for 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 all of you for. Uh, easier implementing in the future if any one of you would decide to use this solution yeah i also decided to put it here into the presentation yeah uh, so you see that uh, i was only able to, <clears throat> to 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 capture one part of the enhancement here and the next is visible on uh, the next slide here yeah so i hope that uh, based on this information here, you would be also able to implementing something similar. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> eventually, uh, uh, here you can see the implementation of the get text method. Yeah, so that's something which uh, returns for us the basic part of the message without the long, long text, and eventually. Uh, we will see also this get long text implementation here. That's something which uh, I also presented a moment ago using uh, debugger. Yeah. So again, that should be helpful for you to for for your own implementation. So this is everything which I 
have uh, prepared uh, for this session. Uh, uh, I thought that maybe we, we would have some, some, some five minutes for uh, Q&A, but then, then uh, I realized that uh, in this form of the uh, uh, presentation with some delay, it is not possible, but nevertheless, thanks for your, uh, uh, for your um, uh, for attending this session yeah, and and in case if if you had any any questions there i think there, there will be another session uh, during which uh, we could meet and i could then answer your notes thank, thank, thank you. you thank you bogdan for your presentation um yes in the 20 before uh, 3 p.m. in 40 minutes, we will have our meet the speaker session where we can uh, try to pick up some community questions for you uh, also. All right, so now we're back on track on, in time. So we have, I think, uh, almost 10 minutes break till the next presentation by Gopal. And yes, it was a pleasure to have you here so far. And so make a short break and we'll continue in uh, at um, 15.35.